Welcome to Peace United Church of Christ. I am glad you are here with us today. We have an announcement uh, by Bill Morris. So, Bill? Good morning. I have two items I would like to bring up to you this morning. Uh, many of you received an email last week about how your church council is trying to plan for future services during the COVID. In the email, there is information of how we need equipment in order to stream the services. A constant in our virtual services in the past several months is the tireless volunteer work by Mike Loomis, who has provided behind the scenes to put the service together so it can be shown on YouTube. He does this on his own time. It is an amazing job that you don't realize how much time it takes every week for him. Along with all of us thanking him for his efforts, we need to give him a break. As you know from the news, the COVID is getting worse before it will improve. The ability to, our, to stream our services directly will help greatly. So your council is requesting up to $1,800 for equipment to provide this service. I hope you'll consider it in your heart by donating so our church can provide this service. Secondly, we have a great need for a new snowblower. The old one is in need of repair, which is very costly, and the unit is over 10 years old. We have maintained it on a yearly basis, but the repair is beyond the scope of the property committee. The committee has decided to ask your council to provide a new machine. The council concurred. The cost of the new snowblower is $950. It is an errands with an easy turn and electric start. Thanks to the efforts of Terry Traska of finding the unit we need. We've had three generous offers so far whom have given a total of $600, one of whom is purchasing the old snowblower. So we have to raise another $350. Our church in the past has had a very impressive history of giving for special items such as these. I'm hoping you will consider giving with your heart again. Finally, because I do spend a fair amount of time around the church, I would like to thank TJ, Gary, Sue, and of course Pastor Gloria, and many, many others for their tireless efforts in this pandemic. Let us now be in worship. morning I'd like to read to you the, the call of worship. Come, let us worship God who provides for us. Even though we whine and complain, God hears our cries. Lift your voices in praise, God comes to comfort us. Thanks be to God who pours out healing love upon us. Open your hearts to God's unconditional grace. God's compassionate care is with us always.
Please join me for the opening prayer. Holy God, we confess that we come before you today with parched spirits. We find ourselves complaining and wondering at times where you are in the middle of all the chaos in our world. The tension causes our spirits to wither and our hearts become hardened in self-defense. Split wide open the sclerotic surface of our hearts and let your streams of living water flow in and through us. Quench our spirits this hour and fill us with your compassionate love for one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning's scripture reading uh, is first Exodus 17 verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why do you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go, I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so, in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The next selection is Palms 42 uh, selections. As a deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When I do go and stand before him day and night, I have only tears for food. While my enemies constantly taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking. And I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading the procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks, amid the sound of great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put hope, my hope in God. I will praise him again. My Savior and my God, now I am deeply discouraged. But I will remember you. I hear the tumult of raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Children, I have a storybook for you today because right now we sometimes wonder whether or not God is with us in the middle of having to wear face masks when we go to school or out to some other place. And we, lots going on in our lives. And um, so I 
am going to read you this book called God Knows Me. It's from Psalm 139. Uh, the book is a golden book written by Joel Anderson. Oh Lord, you see me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. You even know what I am thinking. Before I say a word, you already know it. You know when I go outside. Or when I'm laying in my bed, you know everything about me. You protect me from all sides. You have placed your hands around me. Just thinking about this is so wonderful. It's too much for me to understand. Where could I hide from you? Could I ever run away from you? If I went up in outer space, you are there. If I went to the bottom of the ocean, you are there too. If I could fly past the clouds to the other side of the sea, your hand would hold me safely. If I say, surely I can hide in the dark, even the darkness would be as bright as daytime to you. You made every part of me. You put me together while I was inside my mommy's tummy. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Your work is perfect. Before I was even born, you saw me. All of the days you have planned for me were written in your book long ago. Your thoughts are so important to me. How many of them there must be? If I tried to count them, they would be more than all of the tiny grains of sand by the sea. When I wake up in the morning, I'm still with you. Look at me, God. Look inside my heart. See if I am sad or worried about anything. See if I have done any bad things. Show me how to love you forever and ever. Let us pray. Gracious God, I ask that all of our children know that you are with them always. And there is nowhere they can go that you are not right there with them. And may they too find Christ's spirit right within inside themselves. That wherever love is, they know you are there. Amen. Is God here with us or not? This is the question at the end of our Exodus reading. It's a question that many ask in times of empty silence, deep loneliness, and great pain and misery. Certainly, we hear it in the psalmist's voice as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O oh God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where, when can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? You know, even Mother Teresa, in a letter to a confidant, expressed the same concern when she wrote, I look and I do not see. I listen and I do not hear. Her times of doubt came as she cared for the destitute and the dying in Calcutta. I know for myself, that with everything that's going on right now, I find myself asking, where are you in all of this, God? Questions and doubts is not the absence of faith. It is the act of wrestling with God in faith. 
Otherwise, why would we even bother to ask the question? It is a cry thirsting for God. It is the question that the people of Israel, who are literally thirsting for water, and who also are spiritually thirsty, ask in their longing for a sense of God's presence with them. They had been without drinking water before. It was only three days after they crossed the Red Sea. They had come to a place called Mara, and the water there was bitter. God told Moses to put a piece of wood in the water, and it turned sweet, and they were able to drink it. Shortly afterward, they traveled to Elam with 12 springs of water and palm trees all around. They had their fill of water to drink then. And now they have come to Rafidim. It's a place with a wadi, a riverbed, that in the rainy season is full of water, but it is now completely dry. The scripture passage begins, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages. They physically journeyed from one place to another, and they journeyed in their faith in stages as well. This time of contesting with Moses has grown vile. Their complaining has now become quarreling, and Moses fears the people will kill him. The wilderness journey is tolerable as long as God is providing for them. But when times get hard and their security is uncertain, seeing no water around them, they turn on Moses and God. The names that Moses gives to the rock, Masa and Meribah, can be translated as quarrel, quarreled and tested, or as tested and lawsuit. In fact, God's acts are as an invitation to go ahead with a lawsuit. God plays along. He tells Moses, go on ahead and take some elders with you. The elders are the witnesses to the lawsuit. He also tells Moses to take his staff, the one that he had struck in the Nile. It is the staff, the rod of justice. God says he will be standing there waiting for them. And then God pours forth streams of water from the rock. God responds to their physical and spiritual thirst with great empathy and compassion. You know, I am reminded once again of the two rabbis and Eli Wiesel in the Auschwitz concentration camp when they put God on trial. The verdict they gave in Hebrew translates as, he owes us something. Then they went on and prayed. It is an expression of spiritual thirst, of doubt and of questioning in the middle of great agony while remaining faithful and trusting in God beyond the current circumstances. American author William Languiasha suggests you should not see the desert simply as some faraway place of little rain. There are many forms of thirst. And oh, how we can relate to the psalmist's thirst with the words, my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sounds of a great celebration. 
Friends, every one of us aches to be in worship together again. We are in the middle of a pandemic trial. Over 200,000 Americans are dead. I want you to think for a moment of all the people you have known through your life, acquaintances as well as friends. Do we even know 200,000 people? It's an astronomical number, and it is climbing. The numbers are going up in our own county. And a good number of you have known someone who has tested positive for the virus. Where is God in this? In addition to not being together in worship, we are missing so many other things that we once took for granted. We suddenly thirst for them again. And on top of this, there are our own personal struggles and cares individually. And yet, as God said to Moses, we are to go ahead, go forward. In this process, we learn to trust, to let go and let God to be willing to give up control, to let go of the false pride and self-assurances within us, to be willing to be dependent upon God, for God to unfold the future before us. Oh, it is easy to trust God and believe that God is here with us when things are going good for us. Yet real faith, real trust, comes when life gets hard. And this year, 2020, has proven to be trials unending. Faith is trusting God hears our cries with empathy and compassion. Faith is trusting that God is there in the middle of all of our pain, working things out for our good. And faith is taking the long view. How might we carry on through our pain and participate with God in healing our community, our nation, our world. From the cross, Jesus cried, I thirst. Was this thirst for water only? And we hear Jesus also quote the first line of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was he crying out with a sense of abandonment to God? Or was Jesus thinking of more of the psalm? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning, Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet, yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. As we cry out our thirst, we too are called to remember all the ways in which God has been there for us, delivering us in our past. You know, this week I have thought a great deal about the greatest generation 
Oh, no generation is perfect, but they certainly did leave us a legacy, and some of you are still here to help us. I have contemplated their perseverance through the Great Depression and how they came together as a community to fight the Nazi regime and Japanese imperialism in their day. They personally sacrifice much for the common good. What would they say of us today? Some of us have experienced more hardship than others. But compared to that generation, I wonder, how well are we persevering and coming together to get through this time of trial as a community. God delivered them in their time of trial, and if we do our share of the work, God will deliver us too. And yet, too, we know there are those who are not healed, daily enduring constant pain and suffering. Others who live in dire hunger and poverty. Some living with great anxiety of fear of loss of employment. Still others are struggling with depression and severe loneliness. Is God not with them too? One thing I know is that God is with us in our suffering. Suffering right along with us. So with the psalmist, we can affirm that each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon us. And through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. God's loving presence is what helps us get through these hard times. And this presence is made known to us through Christ's Spirit, which lives in, with, and among us. The Spirit of Christ is the living water, which quenches our thirst. Those who drink of the water which Jesus offers will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. So let us sing and praise God, putting our hope in Christ's living waters and God's life-giving love. Now next week, we will confirm two confirmants from the 2020 year. We will offer together the congregational prayer on their behalf. Today, in closing, I now offer you a portion of this same prayer on your behalf. O oh God, increase in them the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Grant love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness toward all people, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things, thereby strengthening them for ministry in the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
join me in prayer. God of grace and mercy, we thank you that you hear our thirsty cries with compassionate love. When all seems deafening silent, may we know you are listening. And when it seems as if our prayers have gone unheard, may we know you are at work in ways we do not know. When our sorrow is great, may we know you are with us, sharing in the pain. Use these trying days as a means to deepen our faith and our trust in you. Christ Jesus, fill us up again with your living waters. Help us to tap into it at the depth of our souls. And let it bubble forward with singing and praise. May it be the source of our hope to keep on going forward. We pray for our nation and that you guide our leaders with wisdom and truth. Help us to listen to one another and to be agents of your healing peace. And guide this church as we continue to serve you as best we know how amid the challenges of the pandemic. We pray for our members whom we know are in need of your tender presence. We pray for Jody and Doug Colrood upon the death of his mother Florence, and for the children Ben, Will, and Henry. These days are so difficult not being able to say goodbye to our loved ones. May they sense her peace embraced in your love, and surround the whole family in your compassionate care. And we pray too for Sandy, as she has now entered hospice care in her home. May her transition be smooth, her pain minimized, and her spirit resting calmly in your peace which surpasses understanding. Hear a continued prayer for Clayton and all who are battling cancer. And we pray for Gary, who will have surgery this week, and for Willie and Deborah and Betty's father and Madison as they seek continual healing, and for loved ones struggling to heal from COVID. We ask you touch your touch of wholeness to be upon them all. And for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, may your living waters bubble forth to give them enduring strength and fullness of life. Hear now the silent prayers that are upon our hearts. Holy Spirit, fill us with the gifts of your Spirit, that we may demonstrate our faith, trusting always in God, who will never forsake us. Together we pray as Christ Jesus taught us to say, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Peace United Church of Christ is working to help neighbors in need. We shared with you the new 2020 video for the United Church of Christ Neighbors in Need special offering. Every year at this time, we participate in this mission. However, times are different this year. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the national office and elected officials of the United Church of Christ determined it was necessary to gather funds from a variety of sources which included neighbors in need to form a COVID-19 relief fund. This fund will put high priority on offering relief where it is mostly needed in these difficult times. The fund will still continue to support ministries of justice and compassion throughout the United States. In the coming weeks, you will hear more about these ministries and members of Peace United Church of Christ will be, will be receiving offering envelopes with their voices newsletter. Donations can also be done online at the email address below. Just click on donate. We will be doing our final offering on October 4th as part of the World Communion Sunday. Thank you for your past donations and please consider a donation this year. God has given us spiritual gifts that we may know the fullness of life. So let us give our gifts to God.
If you'll please join me for the offertory prayer. God of abundance, you satisfy our thirst and meet our every need. From your rock, our blessings flow. We return with thanksgiving our gifts and all that we are with our love. Bless them to answer the cries of the world in need. In Christ's name, amen. Let us trust God and know that God is with us always. And now may the hope and the peace and the joy and the love of Christ be with you all. Amen.